Hello everyone, welcome to this program. In this documentary, you will see the effects of eating pork on the body based on scientific evidence. Pork is the most consumed meat in the world. Consumption of this meat is prevalent in all countries except in the Islamic countries. Pork is the most common meat in Western world. So this question might have come to your mind that why pork is so heavily consumed in the, in the West while several adverse effects are linked to it. If pork was bad, why Westerners should use it? Are the side effects attributed to pork are some fake things in order to justify the, the teachings of the divine religions? Or maybe in the past pork caused some infectious diseases but in our developed world, with novel methods of animal farming, these diseases have been eradicated. And if someone gets some of these diseases, he or she can easily be treated with antibiotics. Or you may say that even in the developing countries, where pork might contain some microbes, why not to cook it in high temperatures for several hours and kill all those microbes? The aim of this documentary is to answer these questions. I should mention that all information that is presented in this documentary uh, are based on scientific articles published in reputable international journals. To increase the validity of this documentary, the name of each article as well as the name of the journal and the picture of the related sentences written in these articles have been shown. So let's get started. First of all, I should mention that pigs live in very dirty places. They live in very dirty, dirty places. This is the nature of pigs, and if one tries to keep them in clean places, pigs make their place dirty. Pigs are caprophagic animals. It means that they eat the feces of their own and that of the other animals. Therefore, in several places all over the world, there were and still are toilets which are connected to the eating places of pigs. In such places, human uh, feces provides a cheap food for pigs. It's worth noting that even if pigs are kept in clean places, the caprophagic desire of pigs forced them to eat their own feces. This is why several infectious diseases are caused by eating pork. Now I would mention three parasites that are transmitted via eating pork and then the microbes that are found in pork will be described. Studies have shown that up to 10% of the populations in developed countries are affected by diseases transmitted via animals. Four major types of these diseases are caused by these agents. Toxoplasma gondii parasite, sarcocystis uh, parasite, trichina worm and tenia worm. Although some, uh, some other sorts of meat can also transfer these agents, pork is the only one that can, uh, that can transfer all of them. Now let's see the dangers of the diseases caused by these four organisms on human body. The first disease is toxoplasmosis. In comparison to other types of meat, pork has the highest capacity to transfer toxoplasmosis disease to human. In some countries, up to 40% of people are affected by this disease. The infants of mothers affected by toxoplasmosis might suffer from congenital diseases. Besides, toxoplasma parasite in patients with immune deficiency diseases causes dangerous brain and eye lesions. As you see in this picture, toxoplasma parasite has caused a big lesion in the, in the brain and has damaged the brain tissue. In another picture, the parasite has generated a big lesion 
at the end of the patient's eye, which can distract the eyesight of the patient. So what kind of food can have toxoplasma? A paper published by American researchers in the Parasitology Journal in 2005 assessed the presence of toxoplasma parasite in beef, poultry, and pork. The, the scientists found toxoplasma only in pork and not in the poultry or beef. It's important to know that a pregnant woman, if using toxoplasma uh, or if they eat toxoplasma infected pork, uh, put the health of their infants in danger of toxoplasma infection. One example of uh, toxoplasma infection in infants has been depicted in this picture. You see that the head of this infant is abnormally large. This disease, which is called hydrocephalus, can lead to seizures and mental retardation in the baby. Furthermore, eye involvement might lead to blindness. The next parasite is called Trichinella. This parasite is transmitted to humans mainly through consumption of pork. Trichinella causes several complications and especially in the elderly, could cause the inflammation of muscles, heart, and brain, and kill the patient. You might ask in which countries one can find the, this parasite, and whether in the uh, developed Western countries one can find these diseases. Pork-induced Trichinella disease has been reported in a lot of developed and developing countries. Countries like Vietnam, Korea, India, Turkey, European countries, Ontario in Canada, and uh, Argentina, Nigeria, Germany, Greenland, Croatia, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Finland, Japan, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Nepal, England, Ireland, Hungary, China, and a lot of other countries. Now, the, uh, what shall we do with these parasites? To reduce the risk of uh, Trichinella infection, several methods have been developed to inspect pork. The first method is called Trichinoscopy. In this method, pork is assessed under a microscope in order to find the parasite. According to the renowned Euro Surveillance magazine, this method has some faults and should not be used. In another method, pork is digested with uh, special methods and the presence of Trichinella will be evaluated. This method is very time consuming and should not be used. In two other methods, pork is mechanically digested and Trichinella parasite will be assessed. These two methods does not have enough sensitivity and um, basically uh, they cannot detect the disease and they should not be used. This is why the Euro Surveillance Journal, which is published by the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, concludes that the sensitivity of the aforementioned methods for detection of Trichinella in pork is below the sensitivity required by the, meek, uh, by the meat inspection regulations. In another uh, article published in the Veterinary Parasitology Journal, researchers assess the carcass of each individual pig using the artificial digestion method in the laboratory to find the Trichinella parasite. Results show that even uh, if the artificial digestion is performed on the carcass of each pig, Trichinella parasite could escape detection by the researchers and infect those who consume the meat. To conclude, eating pork even if bought from supermarket could transfer infections to humans. 
You may ask if we freeze the pork in low temperatures, uh, whether we can uh, kill those microbes or not. The results of several studies that were summarized in the Eurosurveillance Journal showed that uh, the pork frozen at minus 20 degrees, uh, degrees of Celsius contained live Trichinella being able to infect individuals. Other researchers tried another method by putting uh, pork under hydrodynamic pressure to kill Trichinella parasite. Results which were published in the Journal of Food Protection showed that the pressing method used uh, was not able to kill Trichinella parasite. So now one can come forward and uh, say whether it's possible to cook pork under hot temperatures for a long time to kill all its microbes and parasites. Wait a little until I answer this question in the next slides. The next disease is made by Tenia solium worm, which grows in the body of pigs. This worm can attack several body tissues. For example, it can attack muscles and destroy them, or attack the eye and make the patient blind. Although some other sorts of meat can be contaminated by some forms of tenia worms, the disease caused by tenia solium, which is generated by infected pork, in much, is much more dangerous. For example, other worms do not attack the brain, but the tenia solium worm of the pork attacks the brain tissue and as you see in this picture, it digs several holes in the brain tissue. Such cases might easily bring about untreatable brain complications and even kill the patient. So far I mentioned several infections caused by parasites and worms due to the consumption of pork. Now I quickly touch upon some of the bacterial and viral diseases accompanied by eating pork. Since there are numerous such diseases, each comprised of several signs and symptoms, explaining each disease in detail in, is time consuming and does not fit the uh, time schedule of this documentary. Therefore, I just mentioned the name of the disease and, and its causative agent. A paper that was published in 2012 in the Epidemiology and Infection Journal assessed the rather widespread prevalence of salmonellosis disease caused by consumption of pork in Denmark. Salmonella uh, microbes can induce diarrhea. Another paper that was published in the Lancet Journal, which is one of the most famous medical journals uh, evaluated the transmission of Yersinia enterocolitica bacteria via eating pork. Researchers in this paper suggested uh, parents not to feed their children with pork. This bacteria induces bloody diarrhea uh, which could cause stomach ache and therefore be mistaken with appendicitis, taking the patient to the operation room. Several other scientific papers have reported the incidence of Brucella bacteria following the consumption of pork in the United States of America. This bacteria causes a disease characterized by perspiration and pain in the muscles and joints. Another bacteria by the name of Yersinia pseudotuberculosis that can cause stomach ache and could be mistaken by appendicitis was extracted from pig's internal organs. The dan dangerous E. coli H15707 has been found in the wastewater of pork processing. This bacteria can cause bloody diarrhea and deadly kidney failure. It's interesting that although this bacteria can be found in the beef as well, a research performed in Africa showed that the prevalence of this bacteria in pork is greater than its prevalence in beef. 
The next bacteri bacteria found in pork is Clostridium difficile. This can cause diarrhea. The very dangerous H1N1 influ influenza virus uh, that can be deadly uh, has been found in peaks of a center in Italy. The next bacteria that can cause diarrhea is Listeria monocytogenes. If this pork related bacteria attacks the brain and membranes around it, it can cause serious complications. This bacteria in pregnant women is dangerous and if it involves infants, it can kill 50% of them. A type of E. coli bacteria that produces a toxin called verotoxin has been found in pork sausages in Italy. This bacteria can induce diarrhea and kidney failure. Two studies that were performed in France and USA assess the disease caused by Salmonella enterica bacteria due to pork consumption. Another paper warned that pork infected with the Salmonella enterica is a new threat for human health. It's interesting to know that in an article published in the International Journal of Food Microbiology, it was mentioned that the salmonella bacteria exist in the air of pork slaughterhouses and could be transferred via air to people working there. Due to microbial contamination of pigs, they are fed with antibiotics. However, a lot of bacteria found in pork have become resistant to antibiotics over time. For example, in a study performed in uh, Thailand and published in the uh, Frontiers of Microbiology journal, Staphylococcus aureus bacteria that was resistant to the antibiotic methicillin was found in pigs and in pork. It's important to note that if someone is infected with antibiotic resistant bacteria, normal antibiotics will not be useful and more expensive drugs with higher side effects should be used. Danish researchers studied the E. coli bacteria isolated from pork and found that this bacteria became resistant to the sulfonamide group of antibiotics. The result of this study was published in the International Journal of Food Microbiology. In another study published in the Veterinary Microbiology Journal, Salmonella enterica bacteria resistant to multiple antibiotics was detected. Now one may ask whether these bacteria are found only in pork or other kind of meat might also have them. The answer to this question can be found in a study con conducted in Hong Kong and published in the Journal of Fo uh, Foodborne Pathogens and Disease. In this study, existence of the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus bacteria in pork, chicken and beef was assessed. Results showed that whereas 22% of pork samples were infected, only 7% of the chicken and 4% of the beef samples were contaminated. These results show that in that study, the pork contamination was threefold uh, three higher than the chicken and fivefold higher than the beef contamination. It is why pork is the most contaminated meat. If you remember, the uh, Trichina parasite is resistance to freezing. So the question is whether these uh, other bacteria can be destroyed by freezing. The, result, uh, the results of a study published in the Journal of Foodborne Pathogens and Disease uh, showed that freezing pork cannot kill Yersinia entrocolitica and infected frozen pork can transmit this disease to humans. Having briefly assessed parasites and microbes found in pork, we study the pork viruses that can induce diseases. 
Researchers assessed the pork sausages sold in the shops of England and found that 10% uh, of these meats contain the genetic material of hepatitis E virus, which is called viral RNA. Another study was conducted in England and Wales and was published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Infection. Researchers of that study announced that the ready-to-eat pork pie Pro, uh, pork pie products and ham are risk factors for acquisition of hepatitis E. They also mentioned that in the United Kingdom, the minimum industry standards for pork products such as pork pie is 70 degrees Celsius for two minutes. However, inactivation studies indicate that this may not be sufficient to destroy infectious hepatitis E virus. Another study performed in England evaluated transmission of hepatitis E due to pork consumption between 2009 and 2010. Researchers reported that in the United Kingdom, pork products with high volume nationwide consumption might be contaminated with hepatitis E and transmit the disease to humans. So, researchers in Czech Republic and Spain published an article in the Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal where they, showed that where they showed that hepatitis E is present throughout the pork production chain and that processing does not substantially suppress the virus. It's interesting to know an article which reviews several studies about the pork-borne diseases, announced pork as a source for hepatitis E infection. Furthermore, the chance of getting hepatitis E in those people with occupational exposure to pork is higher. The results of this article was published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Infection. In another study performed on pork butchers in Burkina Faso, and published in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, it was shown that compared to the general population, pork butchers were more exposed to the hepatitis E virus. We saw that due to the heavy microbial contamination of pigs, researchers tried to diminish these microbes by feeding pigs with various drugs. So the question is whether the amount of these drugs remained in pork has any adverse effects for the consumers. Brazilian researchers stated that the increasing use of antimicrobial agents such as uh, sulfonamides by the pig industry is of concern, since residues in both pork and its byproducts, when dried from animals treated improperly, can endanger human health. Chinese researchers also mentioned that the use of sulfonamides such as sulfomethazine in pig production is recognized as a public health risk as it inevitably results in sulfamethazine residues in pork. Therefore, sophisticated laboratory methods such as liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry or various immunoassays, immunoassays have been devised to detect antibiotics in pork. So it may come to your mind what harm some antibiotic remnant would have for our health. Firstly, continuous consumption of antibiotics can generate antibiotic resistant microbes. And if someone gets these microbes, normal antibiotics won't work and stronger drugs with higher side effects uh, on normal tissues must be administered. Secondly, some of these antibiotics can induce cancer. A study performed by an American researcher and published in the Journal of Animal Sciences showed that the sulfamethazine antibiotic in mouse can induce the cancer of thyroid follicular cells. So we can conclude that the rigorous antibiotic treatment of pigs is a dangerous act and can put the health of poor consumers in danger. Okay, we briefly discussed the infectious diseases caused by poor consumption. Now let's see what other diseases are related to pork. The first disease is multiple sclerosis or MS, where the covering of nerve cells is damaged. 
MS has several manifestations including fatigue, muscle weakness, problems in speaking, eyesight weakness, uh, and double vision, paralysis, urinary, and defecation incontinence. Severe disease can make patients bedridden. In an article published in the Medical Hypothesis Journal, an association was found between the consumption of pork and the prevalence of MS. As you see in this diagram, as we move to the right upper corner, the consumption of pork and the prevalence of MS increases. As you see, Germany has the highest consumption of pork and also the highest prevalence of MS. But Australia, which is also a developed and industrial country, is located in the left lower side of the diagram, where the consumption of pork and the prevalence of MS is low. In addition to Australia, several other countries are located in the left lower part of the diagram, such as India and Indonesia. The reason why pork is not consumed so much in these countries is that Indonesia is an Islamic country and in Islam pork is forbidden. In India, eating meat and especially pork does not match with the culture of people. Whatever the reason is, the consumption of pork and the prevalence of MS is low in these countries. It's interesting to note that the researchers of the last study mentioned that uh, it is pork which is associated with MS, while eating beef does not increase the risk of MS. This shows that meat itself is not related to MS, but the source of meat is important in MS. And as mentioned, it is pork which is related to MS. You may know that in the West, people may eat pork ham for breakfast. A group of researchers wanted to know if eating eggs instead of pork ham would have a beneficial effect on blood sugar. Therefore, two groups of people received either pork ham or egg for their breakfast. The results that was published in the Diab Diabetes Care Journal showed that the egg consumers had a more stable blood sugar when the, uh, in comparison to the ham consumers. It's important to note that in diabetes, the blood sugar stability gets disturbed and increases. Liver plays vital roles in our body, such as production of important proteins, neutralizing toxins, and generation of hormones. Liver insufficiency, which is called cirrhosis, can lead to death and its main treatment is liver transplantation, a procedure which uh, is not only a very expensive treatment, but also is associated with a lot of side effects. In a research published in the Lancet Journal, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals, researchers showed that there is direct a relationship between eating pork and dying from liver cirrhosis. In a way that in Germany, which has the highest consumption of pork, the highest rate of death due to liver cirrhosis is reported, while in the Australia and New Zealand, where people eat other sorts of meat instead of pork, the death due to liver cirrhosis is lower. Another paper published in the Epidemiology and Infection Journal showed a direct relationship between consumption of pork and death due to the uh, chronic liver disease. Again, Germany and Austria, both having the highest consumption of pork, have the highest rate of death due to the chronic liver disease. In Australia and New Zealand, however, pork consumption is lower and so is the rate of death due to the chronic liver disease. It has been demonstrated in this study that alcohol and pig meat consumption are independently associated with death due to the chronic liver disease in 18 developed countries. Now one may ask whether eating beef can also induce liver disease. Researchers showed in the same paper 
that the rate of liver failure was lower in those countries where people e uh, use beef instead of pork. This is not due to a beneficial effect of beef in preventing liver disease. The reason is that those uh, people who eat beef do not eat pork anymore and are safe uh, from the adverse effects of pork. For example, you see in Australia uh, that beef consumption is higher and pork consumption is less and therefore the mortality uh, rate due to liver failure is lower. In Germany and Austria, however, uh, beef is less consumed because pork is the dominant meat and thus death due to liver failure is higher. Another paper was published in the International Journal of Inf Environmental Research and Public Health. In this paper, researchers assessed the morbidity and mortality rate due to the chronic liver disease between years 1996 to 2003. Results demonstrated that there is a direct relationship between pork consumption and the death due to chronic liver disease in a manner that in, Aust uh, in Austria and Germany, as you see here, in Austria and Germany, where the highest rate of pork consumption exists, the higher rate of death due to the chronic liver disease is reported. Now we would discuss another group of diseases famous for their name, cancers. Based on the report of the World Health Organization, cancer caused 7.5 million deaths in 2008. The cancer-related death is increasing and based on predictions in 2030, it will reach 13 million deaths in each year. Having seen these statistics, let's see if pork can lead to cancer or not. Based on a paper published in 2012 in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal, Poor consumption increases the, list, the risk of a lymph node cancer called non-Hodgkin lymphoma. This is a picture from a patient with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Another paper published by Canadian scientists showed that eating pork and consuming alcohol are directly related to death due to liver cancer. Here you see a physician doing surgery on a patient with liver cancer. Now we shift to brain cancer. German researchers performed a study in Germany on a brain cancer called glioma. They reported that a significantly higher risk of glioma was found for consumers of cooked ham, processed pork and fried, fried bacon. Other articles published in the Neuroepidemiology Journal and one study performed in Los Angeles and published in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal confirmed these findings. The next cancer belongs to the stomach. Results of a meta-analysis on the studies performed for 40 years between 1966 to 2006 to find the relationship between, eat, uh, between meat consumption and stomach cancer showed that pork consumption increases the risk of stomach cancer and the higher the consumption is, the higher the risk of cancer would be. This article was published in the very prestigious Journal of National, National Cancer Institute in 2006. Another study published in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal reported a relationship between pork consumption and stomach cancer. Let's discuss a bit about thyroid cancer. A study was performed in Greece to assess the effect of 100 food items on thyroid cancer. Researchers found out that out of these 100 items, only pork has the direct relationship to thyroid cancer. 
The results of this study was published in the International Journal of Cancer. This is an image of a patient with thyroid cancer. Does lung cancer has any relationship to pork? A group of American researchers performed a study on 20,000 individuals to reveal the role of nutrition in lung cancer. The results of this study, which were published in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal, showed that pork consumers had a 66% higher risk of getting lung cancer. Here you see a picture of a lung affected by cancer. To see the next cancer caused by pork consumption, we shall look into a, a study performed in Serbia to assess the non-occupational risk factors of bladder cancer. Researchers reported that bladder cancer was four and a half times more common in consumers of pork. The results of this paper were published in the Tumori Journal. Another study conducted by Japanese researchers and published in the National Cancer Institute monographs stated that pork consumption is possibly related to the mortality rate of biliary, uh, of biliary, cancer, of biliary tract cancer. Another study that was performed on more than uh, 3,800 men in the United States of America evaluated the role of meat consumption on prostate cancer. The researchers demonstrated that men with a higher intake of processed meat and pork were more likely to be subsequently diagnosed with total and advanced prostate cancer compared to men who consumed lower amounts or did not consume these foods at all. The results of this study, the, uh, this study uh, were published in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal. It's interesting to know about a, a study performed on uh, butchers in Geneva city in Switzerland. Researchers assessed the rate of lung cancer in butchers. They found that the risk of lung cancer was increased among pork butchers, but not among the rest of butchers who were preparing other sorts of meat. The results of this study were published in the British Journal of Industrial Medicine that has changed its name to the Occupational and Environmental Medicine Journal. You may have heard that stomach cancer takes life of 700,000 individuals each year. Usually before the appearance of a stomach cancer, a lesion called intestinal metaplasia occurs that can subsequently lead to stomach cancer. A group of researchers assessed the role of nutrition in, in a stomach cancer and found that uh, individuals with precancerous lesion had consumed uh, sausages and bacon. These two kinds of food products contain high levels of nitrosamine substances that causes stomach cancer. The results of this study were published in the Gastroenterology Nursing Journal. In another study, researchers in uh, Toronto University uh, designed a project to find out the relationship between nutrition and intestinal cancer. Results of this study that were published in the International Journal of Cancer showed that pork consumption in females increases the risk of intestinal cancer. A recent uh, study showed that pork oil can increase the incidence of some lesions called aberrant crypt foci in the large intestine. Uh, these aberrant crypt foci are colon uh, precancerous lesions, meaning that they could cause colon cancer. In contrast, canola oil reduces these precancerous lesions. Now let's travel to Japan to see the results of a study on more than uh, 140,000 women performed by Japanese researchers in the National Cancer Center Research Institute. They wanted to know the connection between nutrition and breast cancer. 
Results of this project showed that pork had the highest association with breast cancer, and next came the amount of animal fat. Now one may raise a question that this is pork fat that increases the risk of breast cancer, and not the pork meat itself. To assess this hypothesis, researchers confirmed uh, with scientific methods that pork independently and without an association to fat increases the risk of breast cancer. Therefore, researchers conclude that among Japanese women, the amount of consumed pork, uh, which is much cheaper than beef, is quite important in raising the incidence of breast cancer. Based on, on a diagram published in the same article, you see that in those countries where pork consumption is high, like in Denmark, the mortality rate of breast cancer is also high. In Arab countries, where pork is not consumed, death rate due to the breast cancer is low. The results of this article were published in the Preventive, Preventive Medicine Journal. Now let's get to Germany, a country whose people like pork the most. Researchers in the Ulm University conducted a study to assess the link between pork consumption and the cancer of cervix. The result of this research, which were published in the Nutrition and Cancer Journal, showed that there is a direct relationship between pork and cervical cancer. The researchers suggested that there might be a relationship between pork and the carcinogenic human papilloma virus. The reason behind this suggestion is that after cessation of eating fried pork, a lesion called condyloma was healed. Human papilloma virus is responsible for condyloma as well as the cervical cancer. Now you may ask why pork increases the risk of so many cancers. The an uh, to answer this question and to compare the effects of eating pork and beef in induction of cancers, researchers performed a study. They fried two pieces of beef and pork that had the same size, weight and thickness on two frying pans in 208 degrees of Celsius this would be uh, 406 degrees of Fahrenheit. Normally temperature increases to this amount when you fry something in a frying pan. Then researchers assessed the amount of a group of substances called heterocyclic amines or shortly HCA which are carcinogenic and induce cancer. Results showed that the amount of these carcinogenic heterocyclic amines is eight times higher when pork is fried than when beef is fried. The results of this study was published in the Food and Chemical Toxicology Journal. If you remember in the previous slides, I raised a question that when we know that compared to other sorts of meat, pork is the most contaminated one, so, can we cook it in high temperatures to kill all its microbes? Now I want to answer that question based on the find findings of this article. Cooking pork in high temperature produces large amounts of carcinogenic products that can induce cancers. So one tries to escape microbial contamination of pork by cooking it in high temperature but at the same time put himself or, her, or herself at risk of getting cancer. Another study showed that uh, during frying pork, a lot of so-called mutagenic substances that can induce cancer are generated. The results of this paper uh, were published in the Mutation Research Journal. And this is the last paper in this series of articles that was published in the Cancer Letters Journal. It showed that those people who had eaten fried bacon or pork excrete uh, mutagenic uh, agents in the urine for 24 hours.
So far we have discussed why pork increases the risk of cancer. A paper that was published in the Cancer Causes and Control Journal pointed to another mechanism by which pork induces cancer. This article stated that a substance called ocratoxin, which is found in pork, would likely increase the risk of testis cancer. The statistics show that uh, pig meat consumption in developed countries has increased approximately 2% per year, which is consistent with an increase in the incidence of testicular cancer. As you see in this diagram, countries like Germany, Austria and Denmark that have the highest pork consumption have also the highest incidence rate of testicular cancer. This article has stated an interesting point, and that is, testicular cancer was decreased among Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish men who uh, were born during the World War II, which was compatible with a reduced pork availability when Germans attacked their countries. Probably people do not know uh, the majority of what I told you in this documentary. However, in uh, several of these countries, people do not have a good perception about pork, although they eat it. A paper published in the Meat Sciences Journal evaluated the people's opinion about pork, beef, and chicken. Results showed that pork has a significantly worse perception compared to both beef and poultry on each of these four characteristics, leanness, healthiness, taste and tenderness. You can see people's opinion in this diagram. Here the bold line corresponds to pork and the two dotted lines correspond to beef and chicken. As you see, the bold line is deviated towards the left, which shows that people had the worst perception about pork. Now that we are approaching the end of this documentary, you may ask whether uh, pork with so many microbial contaminations might have bad effects on the environment. There is a paper published in the Environmental Health Journal stated that pork production facilities, when poorly manage, managed, uh, have the potential to be environmental parias. Animal weights are usually stored in massive on-site lagoons that if breached can have devastating effects on nearby surface water and groundwater systems. Pork production facilities are also associated with excessive nutrient loading, occupational health problems, sickening odors, and even global warming from methane emissions. The slides are over. I would like to mention a point, and that is the aim of eating is to satisfy the nutritional needs of our body, and in turn our body helps us uh, in, our, uh, in our daily activities and tasks. Food should be a factor for growth and health of our body, not a harm to it. Now when eating pork is related to uh, so many different diseases based on several scientific studies, it is our duty to avoid eating it. We have a lot of things that have bad effects on our health and we cannot easily control them. About food, however, we can do a lot. It's obvious that if I become sick due to consumption of a food, it is me who suffer the most and not others. So we should take the responsibility of our health. Physicians usually try to do their best to treat diseases. But they cannot do miracles. If we personally do not attempt to prevent getting diseases, we should not expect a lot from medicines in the treatment of diseases. Imagine which one is easier, prevention of a disease or having hope to a very expensive therapy after getting a disease. Perhaps a lot of people eat pork because it is cheap. But ask yourself a question, how much meat you eat in a month? If you get a disease due to eating an unhealthy meat, 
uh, shouldn't you spend hundreds or perhaps thousand times more money on a treatment which even may not have the desired effect? Besides, if you eat less but healthy meat, you do not even need to pay more money. If you are addicted to pork, do not forget that people are slaves of their habits. If you replace the habit of eating pork with another habit which is eating healthy meat, you quickly get used to that. Now what shall we do? First remember that the aim of eating meat is to provide our body with proteins. Those who want to give up eating pork should make a very very easy decision and that is to avoid eating pork, which is the source of several infectious diseases and cancers. Instead of eating pork you can eat healthy meat such as lamb, camel, turkey, duck, rooster, fish and shrimp. In addition, beans such as chickpeas, monk beans, lentils and soybeans have a lot of proteins have a lot of proteins. Milk and eggs also contain good proteins. At the end, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. My email address is written here. Thank you and enjoy a healthy meal.